Crazy Eights. Uh, my name is Patrick Schmid. I'm a philosophy major at UBC. I'm Trevor Loudon. I'm an English major at UBC. Uh, and uh, on behalf of our team and Chris Fernandez, our director, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to entering into this contest. Uh, today we're talking to you about our working title, The Prime Mover, uh, which was defined by Aristotle back in the day uh, as the primary cause and mover of all the motion in the universe. So we have a story about a man who has been privately contracted by a large multinational company with deep pockets to explore the nature of consciousness itself. During his research period, the man develops a proprietary technology in which one mind can be copied and implement, implanted into another, uh, thus replicating his identity and wiping the new host's uh, old memories. His first host, his uh, research assistant, agrees to be his first test subject in the name of science. And thus we have the prime mover and the original clone. Uh, we find that they collude with the pot power that they've acquired to plan, orchestrate, and implement a crime syndicate of like-minded individuals. Uh, and fast forward time and we have the plot of our film today where we uh, have the prime mover taken into custody, processed, and put into a cell by some unknown group of people. Uh, the audience is not aware of the backstory as they are introduced to this world uh, and they're introduced at a very interesting time. The film opens with a man being processed in an unknown, seemingly modern, huge facility. He's questioned about his name, his occupation, his level of education, and he remains relatively calm. After this, he's tortured, harshly interrogated by a group of individuals, and we as an audience are slowly fed information through the questions of the interrogators about this mental cloning project and how they believe him to be the prime mover. The man continues to deny any knowledge of this project or anything about it, potentially evoking sympathy from the audience. In the midst of the loud environment of the torture room, he's asked about who the original clone is. At first, he continues his ignorance. However, in his delirious state, we're then exposed to a dead, quiet room. And where we see this man sitting across from a female, both in lab coats with electrodes attached to their head. As the film progresses, it bounces from the loud interrogation room of voices and banging to a painfully quiet room in a lab. The film begins with the audience not knowing anything, but a man is being interrogated about something, and by the end, they're completely immersed in the loneliness of a man whose identity has been fractured among a population of different clones. The questioning shifts from being about a project to being about the loneliness and crisis involved with the power of giving up your identity. We eventually find out that the original clone is trying to extract information from this prime mover to obtain the power herself. What started as an innocent scientific discovery becomes a war of power. So what's interesting about this idea is, you know, we're, we're, we're exploring what it makes up, what it takes to be an identity. Um, you know, in the information age, we really take for granted our identity and what it, what it means. You know, today we have someone around the world that could capture identity and really be you uh, on, a, on, a, on paper and to other individuals. And so we want to take this further by actually allowing for this technology to exist, putting it into a situation where a man has to deal with this technology and the power he created. Um, and so we really want to ex explore that ethical debate of the cloning debate itself uh, by putting the viewer in this situation. And, uh, and, and the reason why this film is so entertaining is because it interrogates and questions the idea of absolute power itself and how absolute power corrupts absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.